I'll give you a quick demo of our siren disk apparatus. Uh, we have two important parts of that I just wanted to show you to start with. One is a source of a jet of air, just using a simple plastic pump, very inexpensive. So it gives you a nice blast of air coming out of the nozzle. The second thing you need for this is a disk with some holes in it. And we're using some aluminum disks such as this, uh, with this, uh, various holes in them. Um, and if you want, you can make it out of an old CD. That's where we started from. This cartoon illustrates the principle behind a siren disc invented back in 1819. Uh, you have a source of an air jet, such as a nozzle blowing air on a spinning disc, and this disc has perforations around the circle. As the holes go past the nozzle, a little puff of air comes out, and we get then periodic puffs of air. Those periodic changes in air pressure due to the puffs is exactly what sound is all about. In fact, you don't need much of a change in air pressure to get a sound which is loud enough to hear. Typical sounds you hear every day uh, might be between 1 and 10 parts per million change in the atmospheric pressure. So these are very small changes in atmospheric pressure. But we get, so we get this by having the spinning disk. We can estimate the frequency of our little puffs of air, which would be the frequency of the sound, if we know the number of holes going around the circle and how many revolutions per second the disk is making. All right, so take the number of holes to go around once, multiply by how many times you go around per second, and that will give you the frequency. As an example, if we have nine holes around our circle, as in this cartoon, and we have the disk rotating at 29.2 revolutions per second, that's about 30 revolutions per second, or about 1,800 RPM, we will get a frequency of 263 hertz, which is very close to the frequency associated with middle C on a keyboard. A pitch is a perceived quantity. If we want this to actually sound like middle C, we need to have our holes evenly spaced around the circle. There are some interesting experiments you can do with pitch perception with a siren disk where you have the holes unequally spaced. I'm not going to show you those today, but be aware that they exist. All right, this is our little demo siren disk here. We have the disk attached to a motor which can spin. We have our air jets coming through here. We actually have four of them here and we have four rows of holes in the disk cut in here. The inner row has nine holes going around the circle, and then we have other numbers going out as from the center. All right, so if I get the disk spinning up near 30 revolutions per second, give it a chance to get up to speed here, and I press this, this will correspond to the inner circle, which has nine holes around the circle, I should get a note close to middle C on the keyboard. Well, let me compare that to a keyboard just to see. Here's middle C on this keyboard. You can see that's pretty close. Okay? So that corresponds to our middle C. If we look at the rest of the disk, we have our holes lined up here. The inner circle has nine holes around the disk. The next one out has 12, and then 15, and then 18. That's 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5, and 3 times 6. Or we'll have our frequencies and ratios of 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 as we go around. And those integer ratios of frequencies are very important for our musical scale. And I can just demonstrate that for you using these siren disk. Okay, get this up to speed. This was our middle C, corresponding to the inner row. Right. This second one corresponds to the second row, which had 12 holes, or 4 times 3. So this frequency is going to be 4 thirds of that one. So we have this and this. Now, it turns out if you start with this as your starting of a major scale, this will be the fourth note of the scale. So we refer to this as the musical fourth. I'll demonstrate this on the keyboard in a minute. This one is four times three. This one is five. So the ratio of these two frequencies is five to four. That ratio of five to four corresponds to a musical third. So if you start your major scale here, this will be the third note of the major scale. 
So here we have the ratio of 5 to 6. That ratio of 5 to 6 corresponds to the minor third. So if you start a minor scale on this note, this will be the third note of the scale. Okay? So 3, 4, 5, 6. We have the musical fourth, major third, minor third. Now there's some other ratios we can get here. This would be 5 to 3. 5 to 3. If you start your scale here, this ends up being the sixth note of the scale. So this would be then the, the musical sixth. We can also look at this note to this note. This would be four to six. We reduce that down, that's two to three. That ratio of three to two, three halves, corresponds to the musical fifth. So if we start our scale on this note, this, uh, this note ends up being the fifth note of the scale. And that works for both major and minor. All right, and if we compare this last one, that was our six to the first one, which was three, that's just ratio of two. Six to three is two. That corresponds to the octave. Okay. So just using these four, we have the minor third, the major third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. So for our seven note major scales, we're only missing two. That would be the second and the seventh. We can get those and fill it in using intervals on top of intervals. For example, a fifth of top of a third. I can't do that with this device, but that's how you would fill it in to get those last two notes. So that shows you the origin of the major scale comes from these basic harmonics. Now let me just demonstrate with the keyboard that these are the notes, in fact, that we're getting. So here we have C, fourth above, sixth above, and octave. Corresponds to C, F, A, C. And here we have C, F, A, C. Right, so we have C, F, A, C. And one other thing you can get from these, of course, is the various chords. Four to five to six, that's what we call a major chord. It's the F major chord. Comes right out of having these nice intervals. Okay? When you have frequencies which are related by these simple integers, we refer to these as being harmonics. And we have a series of these like this. It's called the harmonic series. Start with some low note, some low frequency, and we'll have one times that. I don't have that on this device. And then you have two times that, also not here. Then we have three times it, four times it, five, six, and then you could continue on. Many of our musical instruments, the wind instruments, in fact, have fundamentally their acoustics based on harmonics. And you can see that most simply with a bugle, uh, it's a trumpet with no valves in it. Or you can just use a trumpet and hold down some fingering and just keep the same fingering to get the same effect. But you can also do this with a flute. Play a low note on a flute, and then you can blow up to get the various harmonics. Without changing your fingers, you can go up and up and up, uh, getting the harmonics of the instrument. Now, it turns out with the bugle, you, in fact, you never play the lowest couple harmonics. And so the first one you start with is, is the third, and then you have the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and those are the common notes you find played on a bugle. And what that means is we should be able to play simple bugle tunes using this little siren disc that we've got set up here. So let me see if I can do that. Get the motor up to speed. And one of the simplest bugle tunes everybody knows is called taps. Let's see if I can do that. And there you have it. 